Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for episode number 38 of our West Ham United career mode here on FIFA 15. In today's episode we will be concluding the transfer window with deadline day, you do not want to miss that, that is absolutely crazy. If we could smash 50 likes on this video that would be absolutely awesome for an incredible deadline day. But before we get into that we've got two games today too, one being the second uh, leg of the Capital One Cup semi-final against Liverpool and then a fourth round FA Cup game against Norwich. So it's a cup double header in this one. Now, from what you guys said in the last uh, video's comments section, I should make some changes to the people that I was trying to look at. Now, obviously last episode, uh, we played West Brom, we played Man City, we beat West Brom, we lost to Manchester City. We also did a lot of things in terms of transfers too. The first one being this guy, NA Valencia. We got an offer from Monaco of 9.5 million. Obviously, Monaco have a lot of money, so you would expect them to come, up, come in with the best offer. You guys told me in the comments section to accept that. Go ahead and sell NA Valencia and use the money to get this guy instead of going for Kevin Volland in a straight swap deal using Andre Ayew, which is what I did last episode. So, we are going to put an offer on the table of £3.7 million pounds, plus Andre Ayew for the man you see on the screen, Julian Draxler, the left mid 22 year old player from FC Schalke. He's got amazing potential. They said they wanted, I think it was £7 million pounds, plus Andre Ayew, so £3.7 million would be hugely cheeky, but of course we now need to go and get a striker too. So I've now got to go and use money uh, from the Valencia deal. Uh, that is now confirmed. Now we get £8 million from NA Valencia. He is gone. He is out of the door. Last episode was, in fact, the last episode for NA Valencia. It's massively sad because I loved the guy. He played really well. But unfortunately, he is out the door. And as you can see, the money has been used brilliantly because... Schalke have accepted our £3.7 million deal plus Andre Ayew. There you can see also on the screen Kevin Volland accepted the contract offer we gave him last episode. So for some reason the Julian Draxler deal goes down the pan, then we can always turn to him on deadline day. But now we're going to go ahead and make a contract offer for Julian Draxler. And oh my word, we could be about to get him for £3.7 million plus a player we got for free at the start of the season. We go ahead and offer him 60k a week and a four-year contract. Now, we need to look at strikers to replace Ener Valencia. We're looking for a powerful, pacey type of striker with decent finishing, sort of like for likes what we don't want another Zarate or Ings type that would make no sense. We want to replace uh, we want to replace sorry Ener Valencia with a similar type of player. That's what we've got him for. Abubakar, Mami Biramjuf, Michi Batshoi of uh, Marseille, I don't know if I pronounced that right, and Adrian Ramos. You'll have seen their prices in the background, and they seem like like-for-like -like swaps. Now, last episode, you'll have also seen we signed Clement Grognier. I said I'd give you a taste of what he did in Aston Villa career mode, so here is Clement Grognier. So that is the legend that is Clement Grognier. That guy was incredible in Aston Villa career mode. Those were just some of his goals, the really nice goals that he scored in that career mode. He also, I think, was the lead assist maker in that career mode by the time that series ended. So he was an absolute god. I'm really, really looking forward to using him in this career mode too. And as you can see, he will be starting this game, leading the team out in the second leg of the Capital One Cup semi-final. We, of course, won the first leg 1-0 at our home ground. Now we go to Anfield to try and preserve our lead. Sacco playing up front with no Valencia, of course. Gronje there as an attacking mid with Ayu and Scherner as the wingers. Koyate and Delph as the defensive mids. And it was Andre Ayu going down the left-hand side who would start things off in just a third minute. He puts it across there for Diafra Sacco, but he can't steer it towards goal. Now Gronje is going to put a ball in towards Lasse Scherner. And Lasse Scherner gets his head on it and scores. And after just seven minutes of this second leg, we find ourselves doubling our lead. It's now 2-0 and we are winning at Anfield. Another assist for Clement Grogne. Seven minutes into his full debut. Now, Andre Ayew going forward again, dominating the first ten minutes. Ayew trying to make sure that he stays at the club. Another corner comes in in the 34th minute. And it's 3-0 on aggregate. Samuel Umtiti with the header this time. It's Grogne in again. Grogne with two assists on his full debut. And it is 2-0 through two pretty much identical goals. But now Liverpool have to react. They're down 3-0 on aggregate, and Lucas Leiva almost doing that, hitting the post. Now Lasse Schoener going forward in the second half, and he hits the post. A great save from Mignolet onto the post. That's a Chida now going forward. A few minutes later, it falls to Sacco, and it's a good save yet again from Mignolet, keeping them in this tie. Now Joe Allen receiving the ball from Daniel Sturridge, and that is a goal back for Liverpool. A little bit of hope here at Anfield. A nice little layoff from Sturridge, and a brilliant finish, it has to be said, from Joe Allen on his weak foot to make it 2-1 on the night, and 3-1 on aggregate. But now Schoener, Wrigley, 
struggling through challenges. He's just got to calm and compose himself and he puts it straight into the top corner. And that now surely means the final of the Capital One Cup with that fantastic finish from Las Asia. And Liverpool going forward again. It's Lucas again testing our goal. This time Scuffe saves it and we win 3-1 on the night. 4-1 on aggregate, our best performance in a long, long time. Last say Scherner gets man of the match after a brace. Grogne equals his rating after a brace of assists. Literally, what a performance that is. 3-1 on aggregate, beating Liverpool comfortably in the semi-finals. And we now go through to face Chelsea in the final of the Capital One Cup. What a game, what a performance. It is now, however, time to see some more transfer activity. Julian Traxler has actually declined that contract offer. He basically wants more money, and it's a pretty similar story for Porto. So we're going to have to offer some more money, not only for Julian Traxler in terms of wages, but now uh, stick in an improved bid for Vincent Abubakar, the Porto striker from Cameroon. So we'll do that after this game. This game is on the 30th of January, which means after this game, it will literally be deadline day. So we're going to have to resolve all that stuff with Draxler, with Abubakar, with whoever we get as a striker on deadline day. It's all come down to that. But now it is time for some sort of some shorter highlights of this FA Cup tie against Norwich because I want to sort of focus on the transfers. There you can see the squad and the formation in the background. And Bolo actually starting this game coming into the side for Diafra Sacco. And it was us going forward straight away. Vinaldum giving the ball to Zarate. He skips past the challenge and with a beautiful finish tucks it away there. Lovely actual fantastic power shot, uh, shot there from outside of the area just about in the ninth minute to give us a 1-0 lead here against Norwich. And we will go forward again. Lovely ball over the top there towards Mbolo. He nods it down again for Zarate in a very similar position. Position, and it's a very similar finish, this, uh, this time going straight into the top bins as opposed to middle far bins. And uh, it's a fantastic finish to double our lead and double Zarate's tally in just the 17th minute. But now moving into the second half, it's Van Wolfswinkel. He picks the ball up and slots it past Simone Scuffe after that first touch. Some pretty poor defending uh, caught on the break there by Norwich. And now Norwich have a goal back to make it 2-1 in the 47th minute. And Van Wolfswinkel would score again in the 77th minute to actually equal things up and make it 2-2. And now... The momentum is with Norwich, and that's what scares me. Bradley Johnson with a lovely one-two, and he finishes it off in the 88th minute to complete a hideous comeback for us. Norwich actually win the game 3-2. You'll see the stats now. We definitely, obviously, well, we completely deserve to win the game. Ten shots on target compared to three for Norwich. They had three shots on target and scored all three of them. But, you know, fair play to them. They were far more clinical than we were. And what a comeback for Norwich. But it's a massive disappointment for us because we're out of the FA Cup in just the fourth round. And, yeah, so we now have to rely in terms of domestic cups on the Capital One Cup. We are, of course, in the final there. As you can see, Julian Draxler, just confirmation that he did decline that contract offer. So we're now going to go in and make an improved wage offer for him, this time of 75 k with a four-year contract length. Now, after that, you can see confirmation that the other strikers we were looking at, Adrian Ramos, Michi Batshoi, and Mame Biram Juve, all the teams that they play for respectively rejected the offers that we made for those uh, players, so we're not going to be going in for them. We're going to be looking at this guy, Vincent Abubakar, a very pacey and strong player, but Porto want £9.5 million, pounds, which means we're going to have to sell someone here on this deadline date, otherwise we're not going to be able to afford him and Draxler, otherwise we'll have to go in for Voland. As you can see now, with just seven hours of deadline day left, we've got an email back, and Porto have actually accepted that offer of £9.5 million. We basically just matched their asking price for that, so that that's now, that's now there. We can go for a contract offer when we have enough money to complete the deal. As you can see, Draxler has now accepted that new 75k a week contract offer, but we're going to need more wages here to complete this deal uh, in the budget allocation. So I had an idea. Let's go in for a young winger who has potential, who has a lot lower wages, and just do a trade offer for Matt Jarvis. So I chose this guy, Marcel Sabitzer, who plays for Red Bull uh, Leipzig, I think it is. He's got very good potential. He's a fairly, you know, pacey player. He's a, he's a fairly decent light for light replacement for Jarvis. However, Spanner flung firmly into the works with three hours of deadline day to go as Southampton come in with a 4.6 million offer. We're just going to straight up accept that. And as you can see, Matt Jarvis is now sold to Southampton. We get £3.9 million out of the deal. But crucially, is that enough now? Is that enough money to now complete the Vincent Abubakar and Julian Draxler deals? Here you can see we're making a contract offer now because we can match that. We've got enough wages, but do we actually have enough money in the transfer kitty 
to complete these uh, two transfers on deadline day here. As you can see, uh, Vincent Abubakar actually accepted that contract offer straight away and with just one hour of deadline day remaining, we do in fact have enough money by the skin of our teeth, by £14,000 to complete a double signing with one hour to go of Vincent Abubakar, a like-for-like -like replacement of Enevalence who's been sold to Monaco for actually the same amount of money and he's a better stat as you'll see later. And more crucially, Julian Draxler for £3.7 million plus plus Andre Ayew. That is now a done deal. You guys wanted to see it in the comment section last time instead of Kevin Volland. And I have just about managed to do it for you here with one hour of deadline day to go and with pretty much no money at all. Now, it was actually at this point I realised we had enough wages to maybe even sneak in a pre-contract agreement deal with Danilo of Porto. A very good right back. He's better than Atsuto Achida. We could potentially get him for free if we can manage, but we run out of time, unfortunately, on deadline day. My, my one regret of an incredible deadline day Day, is that we didn't quite manage to get uh, Danilo there, the very solid right back from Porto, on a pre-contract agreement. They're just confirmation that deadline day has ended. £92.2 million spent, but crucially, we managed to sign Vincent Abubakar, a new striker, and Julian Draxler on deadline day with an hour to go. Imagine if we got Danilo on a pre-contract agreement as well. He would have been then arriving in the summer. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened, but here you can see in the background the stats of the players we've signed. I'll do a proper squad report next episode, but these are just the two players we've brought in, so you know who I've signed. Vincent Abubakar there with 82 acceleration, good sprint speed and strength, as well as shot power. And then Julian Draxler, the 22-year-old player, 81 stat there after Abubakar was 76. So he's two stats better than uh, Valencia and with the potential to grow uh, higher than that too. And there you can see Draxler's stats. Absolutely awesome attributes, pretty much across the board. So what an absolutely astonishing deadline day, an incredible episode. If you made it this far into the video, I know it'll have been quite a long one, but I hope it has been worth it. Feel free to drop a like if you did enjoy this video. 50 likes yet again would be absolutely awesome on this series. We've been doing that recently. It's absolutely awesome. Subscribe if you are new around here as well. And comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. As well as your opinions on that episode, on that deadline day. Did I do a good job? I feel as if I did okay. But uh, I'd love to hear your opinions as well down in the comment section below. So that leaves me with enough time to tell you. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye.